from the appeal, West London Mental Health NHS Trust against Chabra. Lord Hodge will summarise the decision of the court. This is an appeal in which a consultant psychiatrist sought injunctive relief against her employer, a National Health Trust, uh, from operating a disciplinary procedure. The appeal raises important questions about the procedures which the Secretary of State for Health introduced in 2003 for handling concerns about the performance of a doctor or dentist employed by the NHS. Those procedures were set out in a document called Maintaining High Professional Standards in the Modern NHS. The Respondent Trust introduced policies to comply with the Secretary of State's direction to implement the new procedures by amending its disciplinary policy and introducing a new policy D4A. The new procedures provide that where concerns are expressed about a doctor or dentist, a senior official in the employing trust is to act as case manager to deal with those concerns. In the case of consultants, the trust's medical director is the case manager who is responsible for, uh, for appointing the case investigator. The principal issue of general importance in the appeal was the roles of the case manager and the case investigator. The previous NHS procedures for disciplining doctors, uh, which, which were set out uh, in an NHS circular HC99, provided that the chairman of the health authority was to decide if there was a prima facie case against the doctor, and if there was, the facts uh, were proved by leading evidence which could be tested by cross-examination before an investigating panel. The health authority and the doctor could be legally represented at the investigating panel whose decisions on the facts were binding on the health authority and on the doctor. By contrast, under the new procedures, the case investigator gathers the evidence and prepares a report for the trust, setting out the evidence and stating whether there is a prima facie case against the doctor. The case investigator interviews witnesses and obtains documents. The doctor doesn't have an opportunity of testing the evidence of the witnesses at this stage because he or she is not present when the case investigator obtains that evidence. The doctor is given an opportunity to comment on the complaints and is informed of the evidence which the case investigator obtains. In our judgment, we hold that notwithstanding the use in the new procedures of similar language to that used in the circular which governed the old procedure, the case investigator's report does not establish the facts in the way in which the investigating panel did. The case manager is able to use not only the findings of fact, but also the evidence recorded in the case investigator's report in, when framing a complaint to be held, heard by a disciplinary panel. The facts have to be proved uh, uh, before that panel. The doctor and or his representative, his or her representative, uh, can test the evidence of witnesses adduced before that panel and can lead uh, witnesses in support of the doctor's case. Thus, contrary to the appellant's submission, we hold that the case manager in this case was not confined uh, to the case investigator's findings of fact when he frames a complaint before a disciplinary panel. Turning to the, the, the facts of this case, the tra trust acted in response to a repeated uh, expression of concerns about the appellant's clinical team working skills and b allegations of breach of confidentiality. The case manager, Dr. Taylor, reported that there was substance in the concerns about her team working skills and that the appellant admitted two allegations of breach of confidentiality. She reported that there was a disagreement between the appellant and her former secretary over another allegation of breach of confidentiality. The case manager decided to convene a disciplinary panel to hear evidence on the two admitted allegations of breach of confidentiality, on the disputed allegation, and on another allegation which hadn't been investigated in the report. The trust warned the appellant that the charges were potentially gross misconduct and could result in her dismissal. After solicitors acting for the appellant protested about the latter charge which hadn't been investigated, the trust agreed to instruct Dr. Taylor to investigate it before proceeding to a disciplinary panel. She did so and found that there was no case to answer. The trust did not reconsider its assessment and uh, that the allegations could amount to gross misconduct but convened 
a disciplinary hearing. The appellant sought and obtained uh, an injunctive relief from the High Court, but the judgment of the judge at first instance was overturned by the Court of Appeal. We allow this appeal for the following reasons. First, we are satisfied that the allegations of breach of patient confidentiality taken at their highest do not amount to gross misconduct, which would entitle the trust to dismiss the appellant. While, breaches of confidentiality, while the breaches of confidentiality are capable of amounting to serious misconduct, they were very different in their nature from a deliberate breach of a patient's confidentiality, such as revealing information to the media. Accordingly, we will make an order restraining the trust from pursuing those concerns as matters of gross misconduct. Secondly, the combination of irregularities in the trust's operation of its disciplinary procedure has undermined the fairness of that procedure and has entailed a breach of the appellant's contract. Those irregularities are A, the incorrect categorization of the appellant's conduct as gross misconduct, B, that the trust in characterizing the conduct as gross misconduct relied on terms of the contract which were not in force when the, event, the events giving rise to the complaints occurred. C, the involvement of the investigative in the investigative exercise of a member of the trust's human resources team, and in particular his drafting of amendments to the case investigator's report when the trust had undertaken to the appellant that that individual would not be involved, and D, the trust's failure to reassess the characterization of the alleged conduct uh, uh, when the uh, second investigation cleared the appellant of the additional complaint. The cumulative effects of these irregularities uh, 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 has persuaded us that unusually the court should intervene and grant injunctive relief. We therefore allow the appeal and make an order restraining the trust from pursuing the confidentiality concerns without first starting and completing a fresh investigation. Thank you.